Hi everyone, this is Yann Camus of Bliss Climbing and today I want to test the Edelrid Fuse with the Mammoth Infinity Dry 9.5 millimeter rope. And you will see it doesn't go according to plans. Now, a small warning. I'm not using the Edelrid Fuse as specified in the manual and please use it as specified in the manual. This is not a rope solo device. It's meant for fall arrest and you need an energy absorber. I am using the Line Scale 3 by Line Grip in order to record all the loads. So thank you Maple Leaf Ropes to help me get the Edelrid Fuse. And thank you Line Grip for helping me getting that line scale three. So th I know this is stupid, but I went for the fall factor two first thing and I thought, well, heck, maybe it's going to work, but I risk breaking the Edelrid fuse. Look at the test. I have been mandated by someone on the Lead Rope Solo Facebook group I want to make a factor two fall of 80 kilograms cement weight on the Edelrid fuse on a dynamic rope without energy absorber whatsoever. Load released in three, two, one, farewell. Edelrid fuse. Whoa, okay, no. It was farewell to my rope. Yeah, so it didn't go according to plans. I have a 60 centimeter of core showing in my rope now. It was in pretty good conditions and I could get a lot of climbing out of that row but now I have to cut a few meters. Note that technically all the core strands are pretty much intact so it would have saved the climber. But the rope is dead. So let's look at the graph with the force against the time. So you see that the peak force is 5.73 kN, which was in line with other testing that I've done with this rope. Now, warning, a lot of dynamic ropes I tested, they will just slide and the Edelrid fuse will not even save the climber. So you see in that graph that uh, there are some bumps so there are about five bumps and you hear during the video of the fall some cracking. I think what happens is the device desheathed the rope and then it grabbed on the core but then slipped a little bit, grabbed again, slipped a little bit, grabbed again, slipped a little bit until it, um, it stopped and then you get a smooth curve. And now I did the fall factor one, but the filming did not work. I thought a factor one fall was not a big deal and the rope would be fine, right? I'm pretty happy. No, I'm not. Look. Well, that's to be expected on such a hard force desheathed the rope again, now over about 30 centimeters. Again, the core strands are undamaged, so it would technically save the climber, but not the rope. The rope is dead. So look at uh, the graph. Interestingly, it uh, desheathed at 5.92, so a little bit above the fall factor 2 but then there was no cracking or anything. Three, two, one. Very quickly, you get a smooth curve 
it's desheathed and nothing much happens on the fall factor one. So after each fall, I checked on the Edelrid fuse if there was any damage. And the 5.92 kilonewtons is the highest load I went uh, with the Edelrid fuse since I got the device. And I found a little bit of damage. Uh, when I open the device and then I close it, look, it stays open like this. The spring is not strong enough to close the device by itself. So this is not normal. So there is some deformation in my device. So it's too bad, but if my life was on it, I would put it in the bin and buy a new one now because it's compromised. So again, use the Edelrid fuse as per the manual, please. And I checked everything. Uh, the other components of the device, they, they feel like they are okay. The button to activate, deactivate the green cam. The green cam is very smooth. The, the black wheel that triggers the green cam at a certain speed, it, it is very smooth. The speed activation, it works. Uh, all the components seem in good shape. The arm that opens up as the strong spring and it feels uh, good. There's no looseness in any part. Uh, the pin to connect to the energy absorber normally sounds like it's in good shape. And the closing of the device seems perfectly secure with the button clicking right in place. So everything is all right, except the friction when closing the device. Not a good sign. So conclusion, I am always looking for new gear to use on top rope solo or lead rope solo to use as backups and everything. And the Edelrid fuse seemed really promising. Uh, there is no teeth. I thought it was going to be very kind to the rope, but in the end, it does like a lot of the devices out there where uh, they desheat the ropes at high loads. So on top rope solo, you should never get above four kilonewtons and it should be okay, provided that the Edelrid fuse stop you because as I said, with many ropes, it will just slide down and it will not catch you. So you have to really know what you're getting yourself into. So I don't recommend it. And for lead rope solo climbing, I think the Elder Rid Fuse is not recommended. So Elder Rid Fuse is a great device for fall arrest. Use it as per Elder Rid recommendations. I hope you like this video. Please click on the like button, subscribe to my channel and go see my website, blissclimbing.com. You'll find top rope solo and lead rope solo online courses. Thank you.